Well, uh, hello again. A new project for today. As you may see, I have this uh, Twitter here or a high frequency loudspeaker. So it get burned. And I was thinking, why not? Let me try to rewind this to put a new coil. Luckily, I was successfully removed the old wire. It was burned like here. As you may see, the, the support of the coil, it's pretty clean. And later I was thinking, how the hell can I do this? Because I never, never, ever uh, tried something like that before. I heard it's possible to do it. What I found, the wire before it was 0 0.1 millimeters, that's in millimeters. I couldn't find the same kind of wire, so I found 0 0.15 and I may say this is even uh, better because the coil is much stronger. If we look inside here, the gap in the magnet, so there is plenty of place to have a better coil or a stronger coil somehow. What I have done for now, I started from here, so it goes all the way anti-clockwise to the bottom and then again up and I will connect it to the next connector here. You see this. For beginning, of course I solder the beginning of the wire here and with some crazy glue I just put a drop, a very thin drop here and a little bit of uh, glue here to keep the first piece of wire in place, as you may see. And then nice and slowly, round and round, I'll go to the bottom and up again. So this takes a while, but with a little bit of glue, once in a while, I can fix the wires and make it uh, back nice and properly. In the end, I will fix all this uh, coil, the new coil, with some epoxy and uh, we'll see that later. Okay, so like I said, I fixed the first here, soldier it and I'm winding uh, anti-clockwise. And once in a while, I'm using a drop of crazy glue. The most important thing is to have the first, the first piece of wire, the first round, I may say. Then nice and slowly, we can go farther. Like this. One by one. You don't have to tight too much don't put any pressure just let it just let it lean just let it lean across the the coil Okay, so I think we're done. Well, it's not perfect, but like I said, it's an experiment. I never, I never fixed anything like this before. Now uh, all we have to do is to have this piece of wire. Super glue. It's perfect for this kind of uh, fixing. 
Okay, there you go. TS100. A little bit of flux. measure this inside the magnet yep 3.9 ohms okay so let's measure this with this special tool we got here you can even hear this one working so we got 15.2 ohms maybe I put uh, too much wire here but anyway for for a beginning I'm really satisfied about uh, the result I'm going to have some epoxy and uh, to do all this all around and let it uh, dry later and we'll see later the results. That's more than enough for now. The secret to epoxy is to mix it very very well until it goes a little bit um, mud. This kind of epoxy it's uh, okay let's say it's drying in 24 hours and uh, it's getting really 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 hard it's a really nice epoxy and uh, you have plenty of time to work around down to the base too down here too and very important here at the top even here a little bit on the other side at the top we don't want the we don't want the wire to, to jump out of the coil so after cures you know and then you have any bumps or something a little bit of sandpaper like this and uh, clear it up okay so that's it for now we have to wait to cure the the epoxy and uh, later we're gonna put all the things back together and we'll test it to see the results okay so after 24 hours the epoxy cured and uh, the coil it's looking pretty okay I'm afraid one of them is a little bit bulky but uh, it was a problem here from the beginning because the support wasn't exactly uh, circular but anyway it's time for testing it so for that I'm gonna use an amplifier and it's pretty powerful and I'm gonna use one of this signal generator and uh, I'm gonna use also my oscilloscope to measure frequencies and current and voltage and stuff like this that should be plus and that should be minus it's very important because the diaphragm has to go uh, in front when apply plus here okay let me have this one in position too let's have some tests so that's the one I'm not sure about if it's working good or not but I have to try it anyway. There we go. So I'm cutting down all the frequencies. Be, uh, let's say I'm working three kilohertz and higher. Okay, this is a tweeter, so it should have high frequency. And it's time for a little bit of volume. Oh yeah.
can say it's very loud. So I'm going to use this adapter frequency generator. Okay, so let's have one uh, 1000 kilohertz. Oh no. 10 hertz, 50 hertz, let's have, um, let's have 1000 hertz. One thousand hertz. Sounds nice and clear. Two thousand five hundred hertz. Five thousand. Ten thousand. And twenty-five thousand. There we go. So we have twenty-five kilohertz here. Twenty five kilohertz with uh, three eighty four volts. Let me raise it a little bit, and now we have five volts or something. So you can't hear it, but it's there. And let's go down a little bit, okay? And let's see. 50 kilohertz. Now it's still there. Ten kilohertz. Oh my God, it's damn loud. Okay, so finally, it's working. I I'm surprised. It's my first attempt to fix uh, tweeters. It's looking like with a little bit of. Uh, attention with a little bit of skills you can do it uh, and uh, this can be used again thank you so much for now have a good one